All right, welcome back, welcome back. It is assembled and mocked up. That's right. The first time I've had all these parts put together at the same time. That was a pinky in the camera lens there. It's looking pretty good. I'm not going to pick it up because it's not really permanently pinned together. Um, the tracks are a bit sloppy because I don't have the springs installed for the tensioners. Obviously, I've been staring at this for quite a bit before I put it on camera, but I think it's going to look pretty swell when I get it all painted up. Um, in a few seconds here, I'll take this thing back apart, and then we're going to start doing the final stages of bodywork. So all this filling in right here that we did, I'm going to take and mask the whole top off, and then start applying the first stage of primer to everywhere that there was any form of bodywork done, like the the spot right here. The camera will focus on it, not the background. Well, trust me, there's a spot there we need to work on, and then just cleaning up all these lines throughout here, cleaning up anything on the back that needs to be done, and likewise on this side as well. All right, so now it's time to get started on the body work, getting it ready for paint. So I have a primer coat on the body, but this isn't the primer coat for the paint coat. This is the primer coat for doing the body work. And the reason I like to do this, and I would imagine other people do this too, is because the primer coat allows you to see little defects in the body work that you've done. Now, as we saw earlier on in the series, I had to fill in the vents that were on this side of the body because they were unrealistic. And then I did a little bit of work on the seams. I made a new uh, panel by cutting a new line in right there. And now I can see that there's definitely a lot more work to do. You can see that there is um, some bubble, bubble spots here in the putty. I didn't uh, get a very clean line across there. I also didn't fill the uh, vent slats in all the way. And then there's some various holes in where I filled in the two basically glued the two panels together with putty and then I uh, probably need to cut that line a little bit deeper and then there's a little um, molding line that's still on right there and then if we work our way around I can see that there's some more stuff to do on that side now one mistake that I made when I was doing my body work before I didn't use a sanding block I used a file to try to smooth this off to smooth this off and it seemed like a good idea it seemed like it worked really well but um, one thing I didn't think about is that's a little too aggressive even though it creates a really smooth result the little edges or blades on the file are basically the equivalent of me taking an exacto blade and going across it gets you a pretty smooth result but it comes with the fact that it sometimes can grab more material out than you want and actually like break it off which I think led to a lot of these little holes in there so what I'm going to do is take some really smooth putty and smooth it on top of the primer now that may sound kind of um, like a bad idea but I've found that the Tamiya putty actually melts into this primer and it creates a what seems to be a nice chemical bond so I'm going to give that a try and then when it's time to sand this out, I'm going to take a piece of wood with sandpaper over it instead of using the file. And remember what I said, these guys aren't very good for that finished body work because they're squishy and they will start to go into wherever the weaker material is. So it will go into the voids where the sandpaper is, or it will go into the voids where the putty is. All right, so it's been quite a few hours since I filmed this and it's all nice and hard cured bonded right into that primer so now it's time to come back over it and sand it out a little chunk of scrap wood you guys know how much i like scrap wood and just a little bit of sandpaper this is 320 grit let's wrap it around here if you want you can make yourself sanding blocks you can take this stuff and use like spray adhesive and then glue it down to the blocks. You can do super glue and then make yourself little sanding blocks. 
I wear sandpaper out really quickly. I don't know if it's just the way I do it, but I don't want to put all that effort into creating something that's going to be dead relatively soon. Plus this way I'm able to just change out pieces of paper and not have to make a whole bunch of different ones of these. So when I decide to change to a different grit, I can do that. The drawback of doing it this way is that it's not stuck to the sand or it's not stuck to the block, so you gotta keep a pretty hard grit on grip on it, but it gives me a nice hard surface to sand against. And now I can start going over this and what I want and I want to take it down pretty much to the metal. I want this to be smooth all the way across. All right, here it is. Sanded down a little bit more, actually a lot more, because we can see all the exposed metal now. And we can see where I did all the filling with the putty, and it all feels very smooth. So now I'm gonna hit it with another coat of primer, and that will give me a good benchmark for where I'm at. The whole rest of the model I hit a few little spots where I thought some sanding was necessary and this will get reprimed as well and give us a good good benchmark for how the body works coming along. All right, so I have done that process twice, applied the putty to the primer, smoothed it out with the sanding block. The second time I applied the putty, I decided to do a wet sanding, which got it even smoother. And now this is the th a third coat of primer. So I'll start from the beginning here, put the first coat of primer on to see where my issues were, applied my putty, sanded it down, applied another coat of primer, saw that it wasn't quite where I wanted it, applied more putty to the little few spots on here that weren't where I wanted it, wet sanded that down till it was smooth, pretty much exposed all the metal again, and then applied this coat of primer. Now this is not the paint ready coat of primer, but the final bodywork coat of primer. If I hold this in the light just right, I can still see just a little bit of a hint that there is some bodywork done right there. And I don't want to take the risk of applying my final coat of paint to that just to find that I didn't actually do a good enough job in hiding that work it's not worth the risk of all the work that I've already put into this. So now I'm gonna get a very, very light type of sand of paper. I've been using a 320 grit, and now I'm gonna to move to, if I can find it in my stash of sandpaper, like an 800 grit, and I'm gonna very lightly wet sand where my body work was done. And actually I'm gonna wet sand this whole thing because if you look closely, there's a little bit of orange peel, which is just a natural effect of spray painting stuff, and get that a bit smoother. Then I'm going to remove the masking tape, reapply masking tape to just the spots where I'm not ever gonna want paint at all because there's spots where I'm gonna glue or attach other pieces, and then apply a final light coat of primer to act as that pre-paint coat of primer. Oh, and another thing that I'm going to do is go over and rescore anything that I think needs to be visible again. Um, this has had a few coats of primer on it, not heavy coats, but I want to take a sharp tool like this one and go back into these little vent details and kind of dig the paint out of the deeper parts of the depression so that when I come back with my other coats of paint, I don't end up filling this in and losing that level of detail. All right, it has been a bit of an insane month for me. I have been able to get some work done, but not a lot. I've had a big change to my work schedule. Also, this COVID-19 stuff has made stuff a little bit weird. And then the biggest thing of all is it's been raining consistently. So I haven't been able to get much painting in because there's been a lot of humidity in the air. It kind of screws up paint jobs and all that. But we are ready for the final coat of primer. Let me show you what we've done here. So I've got everything mounted up um, on the sticks that I'll be using for painting them and everything is masked. Just let me show you what I've done since I last got on film. As you can see here, I've got all my body work done to an acceptable level. Got everything masked up to where I, I need it. Anything installed that needed to be installed has been installed. I don't know what that is. Get that guy out of the way. The, 
most time consuming part has been the cab. So I got all the glass installed and then I have, as you can see, masking on all the windows, both inside and out. So I'll be able to start airbrushing this thing up the right paint color and then glued some stuff in place so that uh, I can paint them all black. Uh, for the windows, I actually created like a little tab that goes under the masking tape so that I can pull that off. I'll show you the peel off process when we get to it. Because um, last time I didn't do that and it made it really difficult for me to get under the corners here and like try to pull it off without either scratching the glass or scratching the paint that I had just done. So um, that's hopefully gonna help alleviate that problem. And then everything is just rigged up, ready to get painted. Anything that I don't want paint on, any like contacting, rubbing surfaces, I have uh, blocked out, like you can see right here, just to make it an uh, easier process so that I don't have to clear too much stuff out. Some stuff I didn't bother because I'll just go back through it with a, a drill bit in my fingers, like right here, and clear that out. But it's ready for paint. It's still pretty nasty outside right now. I'm do my primer outside because the amount of primer that comes out of the spray can uh, overwhelms my little tiny painting booth that I have set up and it basically clogs the filter pretty much immediately. So I've been doing some primer work outside. But what I found it works is if I take my little space heater and I kind of heat the parts up and put the paint can there and heat that guy up too, that I can go outside and knock out a real quick paint job because these parts are so small, I'm not going to be out there long enough for the temperature of this stuff to drop back down big time. But that's been the huge limiting part. So the hump to get over is going to be getting the primer on the rest of this stuff. And then I'll be able to work in my office with the airbrush and start laying down better paint jobs. My goal for this one is to do a much better painting job. The paintwork that I did on the dozer looks good, but uh, once you get up close, you can kind of see where it wasn't the best finish. So that's a big time goal on this. And then I also have to create the decals. I need to get more uh, printer ink which has been kind of challenging because all the stores have been closed and I'm kind of apprehensive about ordering the ink online because you don't know if you're getting something that's been sitting on a shelf for 10 months or if you're getting something that's been sitting on a shelf for 10 years. Um, so you're not always guaranteed the freshest ink, but I think I'm just gonna have to take the chance and, and order it or, or otherwise I'm not gonna be able to print my decals and I want that all done. Um, but yeah, I'll check back in with you guys once I get primer on all of these parts and then we'll start doing the airbrushing. All right, so now that I got everything primed up, it's time to do a little bit of wet sanding. Um, wet sanding is not completely necessary, but it does ensure a bit of a smoother finish when you're working on some of these uh, bigger parts. Let me get this guy off here. And this is one of the parts that I will definitely want to wet sand because I want this to have a, a smoother finish on it when I go to paint it. Um, the paints that I'm using don't require primer. Uh, priming is a, is a good way to ensure a little bit of a better adhesion when you're using paints that don't require primer. But in this process of wet sanding this, if I wear through to the metal on some spots, I'm not gonna be that concerned about it because I'll still be able to paint over it fine. Um, another nice thing about primer that I mentioned earlier is that you're able to see little mistakes that you've made and you can go back and fix them if you wish. The only parts that I'm going to be uh, wet sanding are going to be the body, the boom, the stick, uh, the bucket, and then a little bit of the cab. All the other little tiny pieces in the undercarriage, I'm not going to bother wet sanding those. All right, we're going free camera, no lapel mic. Show you guys what we're doing. Got the booth set up here, got some paint ready to go. I'm going to do the inside of the cab first, and that is gonna be with this beige paint. Uh, got a new compressor, just a little Harbor Freight one, but it is so much quieter than my last one. It also has an auto shut off. 
Got it actually at a pretty low air, so it's gonna have to fire. Oh, turned it off. There we go. Got a pretty low pressure right now, but it shuts off once it uh, doesn't need to be gone anymore. All right, so I'm doing some things a little bit different with this build than what I did with the last build. Uh, the first of which is I am running the compressor at a lower pressure this time. Uh, last time I was running between 20 and 25, mostly because that last compressor that I had couldn't keep consistent pressure, uh, whereas this one can. So I'm gonna start at about 18 and see how that does for PSI. Another thing that I'm doing differently, I'm not thinning my paint as much. Last time I think I thinned this stuff way too much and uh, it was making the paint dry way too quickly, which causes a bunch of issues. It creates like this kind of uh, fuzzy surface because the paint is sometimes drying quicker uh, than it has time to get to the model with. So you're, almost, you're shooting half dried paint at your model. Um, running a lower uh, pressure should help me with splashback, basically where the paint is hitting the model so hard it's, it's bouncing off of it and creating like this micro mist. I think that was another one of my problems. And um, I'm gonna be doing the smaller parts first and then painting the bigger parts last. Last time I did my priming inside my uh, little booth over here and I did my big parts first and I ended up covering this thing in paint. And then I had to get a new filter or I had to modify the filter to make it work for the rest of the project. So this time I'm gonna do all of my small stuff first and then I'll come back in and do the big parts. Alright, so this is the cab. It is completely black right now because I have masking on there for the stripe stuff. I'm going to take the masking off right now. Um, when you're painting over paint with masking, there's kind of like a golden window for taking the masking off. Um, you don't want to do it once the paint is cured completely because you can um, end up pulling off work that you've already done. But you don't want to do it too soon after you've painted as well because if the paint isn't um, cured enough, it'll kind of like stretch and be gummy. Uh, so hopefully I've caught it at the right point where it will come off cleanly, but let's see. Oh no, I took uh, some paint off the metal until I didn't do a good job prepping on that spot then. Getting off the windows. This little tab that I created. Right, so the cab paint came out pretty good. Couple little issues, but nothing major. We'll get back to the cab later. But 
it's time to see if the stripes on the body came out well. So I'm going to take all the masking off here. It's kind of like unwrapping a gift from that person that 90% of the time gets you an awesome gift, but once in a while completely misses the mark, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to find out right now how good my paint prep was. I could tell you it wasn't that great, but let's see which end I want to start this at. I'm going to spray the uh, engine cover last. I'm going to be doing that one in a satin black instead of a gloss black. All right, so let's take a look at it now that I've got all of the masking off. Not looking too bad. Bummed out about these little uh, damaged spots here where <clears throat> I didn't do a good enough job cleaning the model before I primed it, and that's the consequence. I'm lucky, though, that it's just in this lower area, so I'll be able to mask all of this off after sanding this, of course, and then respray this with the yellow. All right, so uh, all that uh, stuff that I messed up on the side is fixed. Unfortunately, yeah, my prep work was not good. As you can see, the tape that I used to mask up to fix the messed up parts on the bottom here pulled all of this off the back. I am beside myself right now. I'm furious. Um, I'm more disappointed than actually upset. Um, as you can see, I could just scrape this off with my fingernails right now. So I either A, didn't wait for this stuff to cure enough, which doesn't make sense because it pulled it off all the way down to the primer, which means to me that I did a crappy job on um, prepping the metal back here to be painted. Maybe I smoothed it out too much when I was sanding it and didn't get it rough enough. I don't know. Um, but this is a huge setback, big time. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, let, I'm going to set this aside for a couple days and just let everything on here cure as much as I can let it cure. Then I'm going to mask, well, I'm going to sand all this down back to bare metal, mask this off, and try to redo it. Uh, the rest of the model I'll start assembling and stuff, but man, this really, <laughs> ah, fudge, that really messed me up. Ah, do. Do good prep work, that's all I can say. Mother F. All that work right down the toilet. All right, um, yeah. All right, so previously I showed you guys damage on the bottom where I took the masking tape off and it peeled paint away. Obviously I hadn't prepped the metal well enough and then when I took the masking away for repainting the bottom of this, it took all the black paint off the back here. Now if you notice something very interesting about how it took the paint off, it took it off just where the black paint is. Um, this is what I think happened. First of all, I think I did a crappy job of prepping the metal back here to be painted. I did so much work up here and over here with prepping the metal because I had done a lot of putty work and filling in that I think I neglected to do anything back here and if I look carefully at this that's some pretty smooth metal and I don't really see any signs of me working it with sandpaper. Over here just a few minutes ago I hit this with some 320 grit sandpaper and you can definitely see a lot more texture to the surface where over here 
everything's really slick. So I think what happened was when I painted over this with the black paint, um, the paint when you paint over paint with other paint, the um, acetones and thinners that are naturally in the paint soften the paint below and create a chemical bond. That's why they always say to make sure you do your next coats before the paint completely cures. But because I had masked over paint that had just been painted, it loosened it up enough that this, this bond at the base was so weak that everything just came off. So what I needed to do was to not be so impatient. I should have waited a little bit longer before masking this up to repaint the parts that I messed up on the bottom. I thought that the orange coat that I had put on the base or the cat yellow coat that I had put down initially was strong enough to be able to be painted over and then masked up. So I shot myself in the foot with that one. It's been a few days, the paint feels really hard. I think if I had waited until now to mask this up, to fix the spots that I had goofed up here on the sides, I probably wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in right now. But I'm here, so uh, it's time to fix it and move forwards. So yeah, clean it off, prep it, yellow paint, let the yellow paint cure for a good period of time, then mask off and do the black paint, and then hopefully we're good to go. All right, so now is seat painting time. So this model that I'm replicating has a fabric seat, and we get the challenge of getting to make plastic look like fabric. Now, when I did the primer coat on this, I didn't lay it down smooth. I did it kind of rough intentionally because I didn't want a really smooth surface. So in a sense, I laid down my initial coat just to get that good base down. And then the second coat that I did, I shot it from a greater distance and I did it in a bit of a faster pass. And that allowed me to get kind of a stippled effect. So this, the surface of the seat, this seat, if you can tell, is not very smooth. It's got kind of a almost a rough look to it and that's going to allow me to create a more fabric appearance um, let's talk about the pants that we're going to use then so i'm not going to go with my normal complement of uh, decanted spray paint i'm going to be using some acrylic tamiya paints the reason why i'm using these is because i have them on hand so i might as well use them so they don't dry up and go to waste uh, the seat in this is going to be kind of a, a beigeish brown color so i'm going to mix up some beige and some brown i'm going to throw just a dot of red in there to see if that works and because i want this to all be flat and i think these are actually all flat paints except for the buff. I think the buff is a bit of a semi-gloss. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of flat clear acrylic. There is a Tamiya version of this, but it's really paste-like, and I don't want to run a lot of this through my paint gun because I think it's probably a bit abrasive, and I don't want to mess up the internal components of my paint gun with a really abrasive one. Now this one is just that, but probably a lot more watered down. But I've used this one a lot and I really do like the Model Masters acrylic. So those are the paint components that we're gonna go with. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up and then get it thrown into the paint gun. And then we'll start laying down some coats of paint. Now time for round two, doing a slightly darker shade of brown here. Run all the other paint out first. This right there is the darker coat. All right, hold it farther away. See if I can get uh, 
on my second coat what I did was I sprayed it a little farther away and I had a little of a heavier coat coming out so what happens is the paint almost dries by the time it touches the model but it creates uh, not a smooth surface which takes away all the shine and the glare and gives it a more organic look which in this case looks a lot more like fabric than if I had spray painted this thing pretty smooth so if we drop it into the interior here it gives it actually let's just drop it into the interior is this dry enough the cool thing about acrylic paint is it dries really quickly especially when you airbrush it and it looks pretty good it's like the only sneak peek that you guys are going to get on anything in here but it makes it look a little bit more like fabric time to fix our mess up my mess up, not your guys' mess up. crisis averted the back first coat of paint is on i'm going to let this set up uh, give it about 36 hours sand it put another coat of yellow down then add the black stripes and painting will be good that wraps it up for this episode on the next episode we'll get to the assembling and putting on a tint and decals and having a complete ready to go model thanks guys for watching See you later.